about to escalate. It was time for me to toot it and boot it. Hey guys, January here, and I know you guys may be wondering, girl, why are you rocking a headset? So I'm actually not home, but I've still watched um, the Bad Boys episode four. So let's go straight into it. The episode this week started with um, everything that happened last week in the bowling alley. So basically they open up with what happened at the bowling alley. Everyone recaps. And if you guys didn't see last week's episode, basically what happened is the end of last week's episode at the bowling alley showed the baby fighting with um danny lee's brother and this week we get a better clip of it and in this clip you can really see that they were working and overworking danny lynn's brother and you actually get a glimpse of the baby as well but after they talk about this they go on to the bus right and when they're on the bus that's when gutter's like oh my god um are they taking us to another party so gutter was basically saying i still want a party so in the midst of all this Mula says, well, since everyone's here, I'm going to take this upon myself to chime in and give my feedback on what it's given. So basically, Mula said that Willem, Will, Willem, William was in a club shaking that rump shaker all over Mula. And Mula said he don't play that stuff. He don't really like that stuff. Now, maybe my eyes deceived me. As you guys know, I do wear glasses. So maybe my eyes deceived me. Or was a good editing team. Either way, I never saw William shake that ass all over Mula. He said, as soon as you see a camera, you do too much. You do too much. Child, the whole conversation was giving me nothing that I needed, nothing that I wanted, nothing that I asked for. It was basically a plate of bull, and I didn't ask for any of it. So the next day, Milan Christopher reveals that throughout the night, William has packed his things and William has made a beeline to the front door, honey. William has dashed. And that's basically what Milan tells the guys at the pool. Milan also mentions that they should make a song and that they should throw one of the baddest parties for the bad boys of L.A. Basically, what William was saying to Milan was that he felt the energy of a beast about to escalate it was time for me to toot it and boot it um william was like i'm not gonna be getting my ass beat every day that's what he said right so basically milan couldn't convince him to come back or he convinces him to at least come get his bags you know after he talks to william that's when milan takes it upon himself to go talk to dylan because william was his roommate so basically he wants to get the tea on that whole situation doors were locked and william said that whatever happens to him is gonna happen to dylan like if they're gonna bank william they're banking dylan too because he's in the room so dylan feels like he was caught in a crosshairs but to me dylan didn't give bothered dylan didn't give bothered at all dylan gave me that he didn't care he was like whatever was gonna happen to william wasn't gonna happen to me so i'm good that's what he gave me brief scene um dylan does step outside and he does have a, a short conversation with moolah and curtis they were coming back home from the buffalo wild wings joint so they had um containers and stuff in their hands dylan came outside you know he smelled the food and basically he was having a conversation saying whatever y'all have going on with william does that affect me Child, it was giving me you gonna be his ass not mine right so i want to give a huge shout out to carry on yes he did repost us last week i'm so happy thank you carry on all right so now at this point in the show we get a surprise scene from william william basically says that he had a bag to get so he came back to the house and i'm not talking about a cash bag he left luggage so he had to come back to get his things now when william came back to the house he was talking to the producer Producers. And as he was talking to the producers, Mula saw a camera and you know he can't resist. So he came outside and he basically confronted William. He said, William, I scare you. William, I threatened you. About to escalate. It was time for me to toot it and boot it. I'm the reason you want to leave this house. I threatened you. William, William, you know me before this show. William, 
William. So I'm I'm sitting there watching my TV screen, and I'm like, oh, this is some tea now, y'all. So Moolah basically says he already knew William. He played some of William's track. I guess he is a um, radio host or a DJ of some sorts. I haven't done my research on Moolah. I won't be doing that, Simon. So I'm not really sure what um, Moolah does, but obviously he has a connect in the industry where he can actually get people music played on the radio and stuff and basically that's what he was doing for William so they already had a connection prior to the show so Moolah's basically saying why do you think I'm gonna beat you up I've known you outside of the show now William is standing there shook just how this guy looks on my shirt that's why I wore it this is basically how this is how he looked this is how William looked at him scared frightened stiff he wasn't giving anything he just kept saying see this energy you're giving me it was confusing me a bit because William was making it seem like him and Moolah had an understanding of something. And he's like, oh, this energy you're giving me, I'm not understanding it. So basically, while Moolah was questioning him, um, William gathers himself up and he gets back in his car and he leaves. As far as I know, that's the last time we're going to see William. Um, Moolah did try to jump on um, William's case and that he leaked the entire cast. Did you or did you not leak the entire cast? who cares i mean the cast was gonna get leaked regardless are you mad moolah that william got that check and he answered the phone call when someone called him and said can you spill tea on bad boys la who gonna be in the house spill tea yes i'm sure it was paid anyone with half a brain would know that they'll pay you for that exclusive i hope he got paid are you mad that he got that check first gutter kind of creeping into Curion's room and he's like i'm getting ready to get in his bed so he climbs into the bed and he puts on a pair of Curion's favorite shades and he's laying in the bed right and that's when Curion comes out of his room and he's like wait a minute what you doing in my bed mike and he's like um questioning him and that's when gutter's like huh, huh, huh? he was like oh i was enjoying the sauna like and then he laid back down and i really enjoy gutter i you know what i don't often see a lot in today's reality stars but i hope gutter can kind of wrap this up and transformatic this into something else and i'm, I'm sending that out for gutter k gutter mentions that he's single and he said well what what is your status to carry on and carry on says i'm super single like i i guess also saying that he's not having sex i think that's what super single means but basically curry i mean um got a k was saying like um you've been giving me the vibes so i just want to know what's tea because you've been a little you know flirty flirty and that's when curry on said i'm just being nice so long story short they talk about um the, the flirting and they just agree to be friends at the end of the day and that's when gutter k's like you know i just came to you about this because it's, it's just been a lot weighing on me he reveals that he's he's lost both of his dads one dad at six years old and then one dad more recently um two months ago so it kind of hit a nerve with curry on and this is when curry on opens up and unlike the blogs and all the media pages i wish he hadn't but I'm gonna spill tea. I don't think people realize that I really be alone, bro. I don't get no family time, so it's like, it's a different kind of battle for me. So basically, Curion goes into his childhood living under the Kirk Franklin home. And basically, you know, I gotta look around, so you know. Basically, he said that he was physically abused, spiritually abused, emotionally abused. Now, I watched tonight's episode with my sister who also has faith. And I just had to think, like, Kirk Franklin and growing up, like, I thought he was just, like, this super religious guy. Like, it's just interesting to hear that he had this dark side to him that maybe the industry didn't know. And there's a part in this scene that they cut away and show Curry on breaking down crying. It was something I had never seen before. And that's how I know in my heart something happened in that home. Can I say that I know? Absolutely not. I ain't grew up with them. But I do know that something happened in that home. So in this scene, we get a lot of tea from Curry on. Um, 
just basically saying the reason he leaked the audio tapes of the way his father talked to him is because he felt like his father was living two lives to the public you're the super religious guy but to me you weren't there you were abusive and this is how you communicate with me it was very sad he broke down crying it was tears everywhere and a part of me connected to that because it, something he said in his confessional which i know isn't scripted or anything he said what you guys fail to realize is that he's really alone out here and he said people don't realize that i guess when they realize he's kirk franklin's son they say oh he got you know he got his family he good you know he coined he good but he's saying that it's not the case of the public all we can go off is what we see you know he was really sad and gutter can carry on in the scene with the hug basically saying that they both kind of relate to each other on the strength of the dad situation you know so they kind of connected with that. And um, Curion also said in his confessional that he's glad he had that moment with Gutter K. So going into the next one, we we holler back at our homeboy Relly B. And Relly B decides to give William a phone call. Now William decides to give Relly B a deeper discussion than he gave to, what was it, Milan and Mula. So basically he says the reason he left um, was because he felt like a fight was going to happen he felt like he was going to get that ass handled and he said he paid too much money for his body he said his body is one of the most expensive things he's ever purchased I think that if his body is the most expensive thing like he's saying it made me wonder um how much money did it cost i've seen william on my screen for the past what four episodes he said his body was built it was paid for one thing I'm going to need for William is his doctor's number. I want to know your information, boo. And I'll keep it, I promise you. Because if that doctor's name ever came up as an option for me, I would never go. And basically, I think that he was saying it to really be to save face. He didn't really care about his body getting beat up. He might have, I don't know. But he said his bag isn't he's trying to get a different bag than other people on the show he does he didn't go into the fight club he enters the bad boys club and i respect that i have to say i understand why he left and i understand why he's not coming back so it is what it is at this point really b says to um william that you want to be a public figure you have to take what comes with being in a public spotlight and i was thinking like really b there are celebrities out there that do not get into physical altercations i mean i could go down the list of some of my favorite celebrities and none of these people are fighters i love lord kim i love will smith i love biggie smalls whitney houston you know and these people are known for not swinging back on people child so not every celebrity has to fight back milan comes into the house and he's basically telling the boys um what he said earlier at the pool house he basically said that he wants to come up with a song and he wants them to produce a song and throw a huge party so everyone's happy and they also take the time to ask dylan how does he feel now that he has a whole room to himself dylan said he feel like the people's champ they said well will i mean dylan if william decides to come back can he bunk with your room again dylan said no dylan said no into the o spells no and that's coming from dylan you know so it is what it is at this point he didn't threw that boy under the bus got in the driver's seat drove over the bus back the bus up drove over the bus back the bus up and everyone's just surprised that he turned on william so fast but it is what it is at this point um did you guys see gutter k in a corner popping gummies it's like gutter k is but you know what i love that i always see these cute funny scenes with him that's how I know he's being himself. Like I said last week when he was twirling his hair real hard when everybody was talking. And now this week I see him in a corner and he's like opening a bag of gummies up. It was so hilarious. But overall that was um, that episode. A lot of sadness, you know, more conversations and stuff like that. So basically next week and they're in the studio and things like that. Child, I'm not ready for next week and I don't think you are either. Albor Curion is a back in the ring. But this time, 
he's going head to head with the original Milan Christopher. Now y'all know Milan Christopher is the is the sex symbol of the house. So next episode he's bringing out um his toys. Milan Christopher has toys of the front part of him and the back and both of them are really you know yeah so like you can actually purchase milan christopher's body parts like toys and have your fun with it so he's showing that in a next episode him and kuriana get into a next episode and kuriana i have to say i am shocked so they're in a studio and basically kurion i don't know the context yet but he says y'all being a bunch of sissies that's when Milan Christopher said, I am a sissy and I'm a, he says that and he's like, you wish you was one too, like that. I just was like, wow. So it doesn't show physicality, but it just shows a verbal, a verbal matchup. We'll see what happens, but I want to thank you guys for watching today. You know, if you did watch this, um, tonight's episode, let me know what you thought. What are your thoughts as the show is moving forward? Remember, run up them likes. If you're feeling your girl, let me know in that comment section below. That's my final thoughts. Overall, episode four seems like it's getting a little better. What I'm noticing with Zeus is that they have a routine of giving us like photo shoots and first day within the first three or four or five episodes and then as the series continues you get more quality so this one we got scenes we got looks we got topics episode four to me is a highlight episode because my sister who watched with me was introduced in this episode and felt comfortable so i do give this episode points for that it kind of showed everyone's personality she didn't feel left out um the people she was asking about those people were shown the other people who didn't really speak this episode she didn't care about them so i think that show a solid you know idea that zeus can do this so this one is a better overall episode than a lot of the other ones so i think they're doing good but like i said like share and subscribe share the video let me know what you guys think and also before you guys go let me know if you want me to do the Jocelyn re reunion whenever that comes out whether you just want me to do their looks or actually review it because I'm interested everyone is talking about this reunion and I know I didn't um I didn't review the season but I watched it let me know by leaving me a comment below and just know this I will see you guys in my next video bye see you guys